I copied one of my opponent's decks to see if we can have some success with it on our own, as it does seem like a pretty fun one. It has Orbital VMAX as well as Needle Queen, two Pokemon that I really enjoy playing around with, so let's see what we can make happen here. We do have a deck profile to summarise what the deck has as well as those battles. If you are new here though and you haven't already, be sure to subscribe down below as I do post multiple times a week and we have a variety of theme deck, competitive and fun videos like this one. We'll start off by looking at the Needle Queen here. If you're familiar with the theme deck format and you've been watching those videos then you'll be familiar with this card. It does have the Queen's Call ability which allows you to search your deck for a Pokemon. And if you have multiple of these, you can obviously do this multiple times. The main attack though here is that Power Lariat, which can deal a massive, what, 210 damage? If you have all evolutions, or even more than that, I'm pretty sure. But yeah, you can do a huge amount of damage with this. It does require a triple acceleration energy, as you can see we do play. And we also have the Twin Energies and Grass Energies in, in here. And we're also pairing this up with the... Or Beetle VMAX in order to get that extra bit of damage in. In case we're against opposing VMAXs, then the Eerie Beam ability on Or Beetle is going to get that extra damage that we need. And we also play the Grass Energy so we can attack with this if we want to. And to finish off for some extra consistency and to have some extra evolutions, we do have the Pidgeotos in here. So, like I mentioned, this isn't my deck, this is a deck that I seen someone else playing. And you can go in at the end of a match and see what their deck is. And if you like the look of it, you can actually save it so that it's in your kind of collection or library of decks to go through. So I thought I would have some fun with this. I really enjoy Orbito. I've always wanted an effective way for Needle Queen to work as well. So I figured, hey, why not go ahead and try this deck out and see if it's any use. Uh, my opponent was able to get set up fairly effectively, but... So far, I haven't been able to have the same luck. As you can see, the supporter lineup is pretty lackluster. We have Marnies in here, we do have the Bird Keepers for the extra Eerie Beams and to draw some cards, but overall, the supporters are pretty poor. The interesting one here as well is the Leon to get some extra damage against those VMAXs again, so very good if you can pull that off, but it is going to be rare that that ever happens. And then the Item cards are pretty standard as you would expect for consistency like the Quick Bot, Evolution Incense and Pokemon Communication. Also got the Rare Candies of course to get Needle Queen out as quick as possible but I highly doubt we're going to get any good games with this. We'll have to see what happens and be sure of course to let me know what your thoughts on this deck. If you've got any suggestions for it, any improvements that my opponent could make for this deck or that I can make on their behalf anyways. And yeah, I'll keep playing around with it. Maybe we'll make something else happen, but I certainly love Orbital, so I'm always going to be posting some good Orbital deck lists in the future as we go here. Let's go into the matches and see how they went. I guess we're going to be starting this game with a lone Needle Ran in the active spot, staring down an opposing Mewtwo and Mew GX tag team. Uh... Definitely give my opponent some respect for playing the Mew and Mewtwo, to be fair, considering the amount of uh, Pass to the Peak that's in the format right now, shutting off all of those real box abilities, so yeah, definitely got to give my opponent props. Of course, <laughs> the first card that they play is the Chaotic Swell to discard, or not discard, but counter the Pass to the Peak, so yeah, they're certainly prepared and they must just really enjoy playing Mewtwo and Mew. I certainly enjoy it as well, but it's uh, really fallen in popularity with the recent changes in the format, I must say. We'll have to see what we can do here though. It's most likely just going to be a big old call for family to try and search out some Pokemon here and hopefully stay in this game. Unless, of course, my opponent is uh, able to get a knockout fairly easily and if that's the case then we're uh, probably going to be losing this one, but for the, yeah, the the very least, uh, we do get to put the Pokemon onto Revenge, so we're not going to be immediately losing. The uh, only downside is we're not going to be getting a good energy attachment either. We do have a boss's order, so we can stall here. We could bring up the Sneasel or 
I mean, this has a 2 retreat cost on the Type Null, so I think we will go for this, bring up the Type Null, hope that they don't have a switch or an air balloon or anything like that, and we will just call for family, unfortunately only getting us one Pokemon, so I do have to take the Orbeetle here. Since we have the Grass Energy, we can attach that onto the Orbeetle. And we even have the Bird Keeper as well, so if I really wanted to, then we could go for that to try and draw some cards. But if my opponent takes it slow, just passes, then I'll also do the same and use Call for Family once again. But we'll have to see what they have going on. Looks like they're playing a dark kind of build of uh, Mewtwo and Mew. What they have the Weavile coming down here, definitely didn't expect that, along with the Dark Energy of course, and they did get the Mellow and Lana, which is going to allow them to switch and easily get the knockout here. They do have to hit us for weakness, but yeah, even without that, I'm pretty sure they would have been able to use an attack for the knockout. So we're going to be forced into our Orbital and have absolutely no way of drawing into anything better. And yeah, this is just, uh, th I just thought this would be a fun little experiment, I guess, to see what kind of uh, decks my opponents are playing. If they're playing an interesting deck, this is the main reason, because I really love Orbeetle, and seeing an interesting build of Orbeetle VMAX anyway, seemed like a good idea to try and copy it, or I, I didn't try it, I did copy it, and uh, just really test the deck out see how it was able to run because when my opponent was playing it, it was running perfectly for them and I, I looked at the deck and I just questioned how because of how few supporters there are and of those supporters there's just not a huge amount of draw. The main one is going to be drawing three cards like with Birdkeeper or Cynthia and Caitlin, yeah we do have Marnie but for the most part this deck just draws extremely poorly and against matchups like this or against things like the Calyrex deck, the Shadow Rider one, you're just going to have an extremely difficult time to actually get set up and be able to win any games whatsoever. Super fun concept for sure, being able to hit with a lot of damage with the Needle Queen, but certainly the Orbital is uh, supplementary from the looks of things. Let's get into another couple of games and see if we can get set up a bit better and see what we can make happen. Going into this game here, my opponent has a interesting deck, shall we say, as they are playing a, uh, let's see, they played a Pokeball, flip a coin and search for a Pokemon if you get heads, which, I mean, sure, it's a powerful card, but I've certainly never seen anyone choose to play Pokeball. We'll have to see what they're playing here, but it is the Mr. Mime, and Mr. Rhyme, so I guess it's the ball juggling Mr. Rhyme deck, which deals damage based on the cards that you discard from your hand with ball in their name. So certainly a fun deck here, but they're going through a lot of ball cards already just to get set up, and once those are in the discard pile, they have very few ways of actually getting them back. Sure, they have the Yamper, but beyond that, they really need those ball cards to deal damage, so... They don't want to be getting rid of them, but let's see what we can make happen on our side. We don't have a huge amount. We have the Orbital VMAX, we have some energy, but I don't really want to play those. So we will just go for the Marnie. Yes, I am aware that I have to uh, get a smaller hand, but that's perfectly fine because I want to find some Pokemon. Doesn't look like that's going to be the case, and we have a pretty dead hand here, actually. But we can at least deal 20 pitiful damage to my opponent's Crobat, also getting the U-turn board down, but if my opponent is able to draw fairly well, then they could actually get a knockout here. Uh, they just need to be able to retreat, get the Mr. Rhyme, and they also need enough ball cards in their hand. They're going for a quick ball to get a Yamper, so they can at least get a couple of ball cards back. But with a two card hand, I'm doubtful that they're going to be able to get everything going. We see a great ball from them. They do get the Mr. Rhyme here. So that is one part of what they're needing. Uh, do they have the retreat and potentially what they need? No, it's just a Bruno for four. That is definitely not going to do it for them. So we should still be able to get something going here. But really we are relying on our top deck. 
can see another Yamper coming down and that is going to be played to get back another great ball from them. Very interesting that they chose to put it down now. Uh, personally, I would have waited on that since it can get back two ball cards, the Great Ball and Poke Ball, of course. So only getting back one is not optimal by any means. We do top deck a Quick Ball, which is nice, so we can get rid of one of these Bird Keepers and have a look through the deck. We do have a couple of basics here. Unfortunately, only one Pidgey. And we do have a Orbeetle, of course. So I think we will go for that. We can retreat and we could actually get the uh, VMAX, but I think getting draws from the Bird Keeper is going to be better here. So we can use our use our board to retreat for free. We can then Bird Keeper to switch back into our Orbeetle. And we did draw it into the VMAX, which is pretty nice. So we'll take that as it is going to be better damage overall. And we can also Pokecom here. Put the Pidgeotto back into the deck and grab something else out instead. I think we'll just get the Needle Queen going here. Potentially, though, getting the Pidgeotto line could be nice to get some draws, so I guess we could go with that. We do have plenty of Pokecoms and Evolution Incense still, so let's get the Pidgey down and let's e -ray Beam. And then we'll also pass over to our opponent. We are just going to be looking to get as many Eerie Beams up as possible, as that's really going to be our main way of winning this matchup. Since the Mr. Rhyme here does have 110 HP, it is going to take us uh, 10 more turns in order to knock those out. But at least we can take some prizes on the Yampers, and hopefully we can build up some energy as well. So that we can get some attacks in and get those Mr. Rhymes knocked out a bit quicker. We see my opponent playing a ball guy. That is going to get them a bunch of ball cards. But we just see them playing the Pokeball before passing over to us. Which is perfectly fine. Gives us a free turn of doing whatever we want. And certainly going to Eerie Beam again and pass over to my opponent. Since there's really nothing else that we can do here. We just have to pass and keep our fingers crossed. But my opponent passes right back over to us. So that gives us some time to try and get something going here. We do have the twin energy, which means we can get some extra damage in with a VMAX if we want to. I kind of like that idea. I also kind of like just holding, but I think we do have the boss's orders. So I think we will be bringing up the Mr. Rhyme with the energy there and Getting a knockout on it is actually going to be great. Sure, we are going to give them a couple of cards with the lucky egg that they've got. But clearing out one of these, Mr. Rhyme, is going to be great. And gives us the first prize card of the match. We really needed a prize to try and help us draw. Unfortunately, just not one that's going to be any use to us whatsoever. Since it is a triple acceleration energy. We do get the ordinary rod coming in from my opponent. That's going to be shuffling it two Pokemon. Of course they can't shuffle in the energy because they're only playing twin energy and most likely triple acceleration as well. But they do get the Mr. Mime back down onto the board. They did also get the Mr. Rhyme in the active since we did uh, boss's orders so that forced the Crobat out of the active spot which is going to help them in order to start dealing some damage. But we had a couple of free turns there of Eerie Beam and that's exactly what we needed in order to be in this game whatsoever. They also got another Mr. Rhyme there, playing a lot of ball cards here to try and get some Mr. Rhymes out. Which, again, I would have held off on, but you see they didn't play the energy, they didn't find the energy into their hand, which is great. Now, we do have another Bird Keeper, so I can once again do our whole... Uh, switching and retreating deal here which is going to be good for drawing cards we can retreat into orbital bird keeper go back into the vmax let's see what the three cards we get of course we draw into more energy we do at least get the pidgeotto so that's going to draw us some cards uh not not very good ones going to be honest we have a pokegom so i guess we will take that and we can at least get out uh, another useful pokemon here uh, potentially another VMAX so that we can start using Eerie Beam a bit more. Uh, I kind of like that idea. So we'll go with that. 
and we do have the twin energy that we can play down as well and it means that if we do get a grass energy then we're going to be in a good spot to keep attacking and we can do 50 damage here to the Mr. Rhyme make it that much closer to getting knocked out with Eerie Beam as we only need two more Eerie Beams in order to knock it out and we also have the Yamper in the back here like I mentioned is going to be knocked out in a two more turns as well so that's a very good thing we can actually retreat here with our Eerie Beam we don't even need to wait multiple turns which is great so let's go with that we'll Eerie Beam once then we will make use of the Marnie and yeah get all of those ball cards that are in my opponent's hand onto the bottom of their deck so they don't have access to them and we can draw into some better cards here I'm going to be retreating a Revimax I think and I think we'll go with the uh, yeah we'll go with this first potentially we do have the Evil Soda and Pokecom so let's search out an evolution and then we can use the Pokecom to put it back into the deck for a different Pokemon seems reasonable and after we've done all of this we can use our airmail so we've really maximized the draw potential in the deck and we're just going to be drawing into some acceleration and twin energies definitely not uh, not what I'm looking for here we'd much prefer a grass energy but that's all right we can still get our eerie beams off so we did one already we can retreat here and use one again that's going to be taking out the Mr. Rhyme and the Yamper on the bench to get a double prize knockout and we're looking in a very good spot here get another Pidgeotto which isn't you know it's not huge we don't really need it right now but that's all right we're going to attach a twin and pass over to my opponent and then on this following turn we're going to do the same thing double Eerie Beam and then go in with the VMAX and attack. My opponent's still trying to get set up here. They really need to find another Mr. Rhyme after we use that Marnie. They do have the Bruno so they can actually shuffle up their deck and all those ball cards aren't going to be on the bottom. They get the scoop up now. They finally find that energy that they've been missing for a couple of turns here and they're able to play down the Yamper so we won't be able to get a knockout on that anytime soon since we were building up damage but that scoop up net completely cleared the damage and they do have another yamper as well the Mr. Rhyme here we should be able to get an easy knockout yeah because we have the VMAX in the bench that can easily get a knockout by just attacking we don't even need to worry about the eerie beams so all my opponent is looking for now is a Mr. Mime on their bench and they do find that with the quick ball Think we're going to be looking to just clear out all of these low HP Pokemon and we don't even need to worry about the Dedenny and Crobat on the back there. They're also hitting into us for what 130 which is not going to be enough to get a knockout and we can just retreat no problem here so we're in a very dominating position and that's exactly where we want to be with this uh, random rogue deck that we stumbled across. So let's do one Eerie Beam, retreat to the other, just to make sure that we have as much damage as possible. We could use the Leon, but it's uh, definitely overkill, so I'm not going to be doing that. We did draw into a Marty though, so that's going to be a nice pickup. I'm not really sure I want to be playing it, since my opponent does already have a small hand, and there's nothing else that we really need here. So we'll just go for the attack, knock out the Mr. Rhyme, and send that to the discard pile. Only need two more prizes, and really, if we get a boss's orders, then that's probably going to be the game since we can bring up a crowbat. And my opponent will likely not have a way of retreating it, which would be great. But they do have a Mr. Rhyme here, and we should be just fine. Got a ball guy from them, searching out three more ball cards from their deck. They can do some damage, but they are going to be losing one with the Cherish Ball, searching out a GX, but they fail it. I'm guessing they were looking for the Oricorio GX to try and draw, but as you can see, their consistency just wasn't happening that game. But ours, uh, I wouldn't say ours was happening either, but we at least got through it. We got all of our Eerie Beams off and we were able to pull through. So very great to see that with the uh, random tech that we came across.
Starting off our first match, it looks like we have a completely dead hand, which is certainly something I would expect of this deck, considering its contents and the amount of, or rather, lack of draw support that it has. And we are also up against the Shadow Rider at Calyrex deck, so it's going to be a very difficult matchup. Either way, since we have a lot of Pokemon that we have to get through here with a lot of big HP. My opponent goes for the Derry Change to draw a lot of cards on their first turn here. Getting another Quick Ball, discarding energy, most likely getting the third Calyrex, and yep, there it is. Will they get the fourth one? We'll have to see. Nope, it is just an air balloon and a pass. We do get at least another basic, so I'll take that. And we can also attach to the active and pass over to my opponent once again. The first attack on Orbeetle just lets us switch into one of our bench Pokemon, so definitely don't want to do that. I want to keep the Orbeetle in the active so we can build up some of our evolutions on the bench. And we do get hit with a Marnie, so all of that energy is going to be going to the bottom of the deck. We do get some good basics here, and we also get the Pokecom so we can get an Orbeetle VMAX. But unfortunately we're just sitting with the Cynthia and Caitlyn. It does at least let us draw, so if we want to get some draw going, we can at least do that. Drawing three is not a huge amount, especially when my opponent can draw two cards from an ability which they have access to multiple times on these Calyrex VMAXs. So, very difficult matchup here, and my opponent is already hitting us for 100 damage. Doesn't seem like a huge amount, but when they're able to build up so quickly, it's definitely going to go haywire pretty soon here. I think I am going to go for the Pokecom so we can get a VMAX into play. And we'll just Pokecom in the other Orbeetle, I think. Definitely grab out the VMAX. And then we will have to use our Cynthia and Caitlin, unfortunately, discarding our Stage 1 dude. Real shame because I definitely want to keep that around and evolve. But it looks like we're going to be dead drawing once again. At least have a support for the next turn. I was just really hoping for some energy there so we can do some big damage. And it doesn't look like that's going to be the case. So we're going to have to pass over to our opponent and hope that they don't get the energy that they need in order to get a knockout. Because that would really mess us up. And we'd probably lose at this point to be honest because of a slow start that we've had here. They are going to be getting the attachment on, they draw into a second VMAX, so they should have the energy here. Yep, they do indeed have the energy to attach that again and draw two more. And they even have the attachment from their hand for the turn, so they're going to be doubling the amount of damage that they're doing here, which is certainly a scary prospect. We see the switch from my opponent. Uh, I guess they just didn't want to have the other one in the active spot and this one does have the air balloon so they have the free movement and free retreat if they so need and they do get the third VMAX down as well as the fourth basic Calyrex so my opponent has everything that they need at this point and all they need to do is keep drawing cards and keep attaching energy I mean not even needing to do that, they're just doing it for the sake of it so that they can get the big one hit knockouts on our VMAXs and there it is, the 220 damage attack. We're not going to be able to stand a chance against that even if we get plenty of cards that we're going to make use of there's no way we can combat that so it's going to be a concede. Well hopefully you enjoyed that one anyways and I'll see you in the next video.